Welcome to Games Grown Up, where we take a look at game releases from 18 years ago. This month was jam-packed with sequels, from a franchise that revolutionized skating games to one that introduced us to hot coffee. Hi, I'm your host, Adam Scott, and today we welcome to adulthood the game releases from October 2004. I don't care who you were, in the 90s and early 2000s, you found yourself a skateboard just to show how cool you were. And when that didn't work, you turned to video games. No. Nope. Mm-mm. No. You, get in the van. It's Team Bam versus Team Hawk in Tony Hawk's Underground 2. This time, it's not just about skating, it's about mayhem. Tag it, slap it, thrash it, blast it on a totally underground, definitely illegal world destruction tour. Tony Hawk's Underground 2, rated T for Team. The Tony Hawk series came out exactly at the right time to capitalize on the popularity of skateboarding and skate culture. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 was the sixth entry in the Tony Hawk series and was mostly the same as the previous games, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. You skate around in a 3D environment modeled after various cities and complete a variety of goals. It wasn't just copy and paste of the previous games, there were some new gameplay features, including the focus ability to slow down time for better control and higher combos. The Nada Spin, which can be performed on small surfaces like pillars or fire hydrants, and the Freak Out, which serves as another combo starter by having you fill a gauge after bailing. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 received generally positive reviews, with praise for its gameplay, aesthetics, and classic mode, but criticisms for its story and lack of innovation. When you think of RPG heroes, what comes to mind? Maybe a knight or a wizard? What about a plumber? Well, it didn't until the mid-90s when Super Mario RPG came out. And pretty much like everything else that Mario touches, it was a success. In 2004, a sequel to the Paper Mario spin-off series was released with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Princess Peach has once again been kidnapped, but not by Bowser. Instead, a group of aliens called the x Knots are to blame. You take a paper version of Mario and explore a variety of worlds, all creatively designed to look like paper, to retrieve seven crystal stars, find treasure, and save the princess. The gameplay includes both traditional and non-traditional RPG mechanics, such as a turn-based battle system, but with an emphasis on timing moves correctly. Critics praised the game for the engaging gameplay and solid plot, and even won the RPG of the Year award at the 2005 Interactive Achievement Awards. By many, this game is considered the best in the series. A hot vampire slicing up baddies, what's not to love? More beautiful than I could conceive after so long cowering under the- Blood Rain 2 is the sequel to the original Blood Rain that was released two years earlier. These are hack and slash games featuring the vampire Rain, who's on a quest to satisfy her thirst for blood and revenge. Blood Rain 2 doesn't follow directly after the first game. Instead, it takes place 66 years later in what was a contemporary setting from the early 2000s. The story is more personal this time, where Rain hunts down her evil siblings who are carrying on the legacy of their dead father. Similar to the first game, a lot of mechanics are tied to feeding on enemies from restoring health, refilling the rage meter, and even refilling ammunition. While a lot has carried over from the original, the visuals and animations have been noticeably improved. The reviews were pretty middle of the road, noting unintuitive controls and poor visuals, even with the step up from the original, but praised for the improved story, flashy action, and buckets of blood. This game was released as Blood Rain 2 Terminal Cut on PC in 2020, and released again on consoles in 2021 as Blood Rain 2 Revamped. Trying to survive high school is tough enough without having to fight Lucifer, the Lord of Demons. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne was originally published in Japan in 2003 with three in the title. However, a director's cut was localized and released in North America in 2004, dropping the number from the title 
as it was the first in the long-running series released here in the States. True to the series, you play as a high school student who has to save the world while balancing his social life. After an apocalyptic event, you're transformed into a demonic demi-fiend. That's half human, half demon. You navigate the dungeons of the Vortex and fight demons using a turn-based battle system that focuses on exploiting weaknesses. Throughout, you'll recruit more party members and demons to fight alongside you. All of this should sound pretty familiar to anyone who's played the games in this series. A few key changes, however, were returning to a contemporary setting more similar to the first game, switching from a first to third person camera and using a cell shaded art style, which set it apart from other games of the time. The reviews were generally positive with some criticisms for the overall visual polish, which is a far cry from the heaps of praise the current games receive for their visuals and style. An HD remaster was released in 2021 on Switch, PS4, and PC. Who is the most powerful video game character of all time? It's Kirby, of course. trouble, call for backup. You can call on the powers of your new friends, unlock puzzles, defeat enemies, and gain new abilities in Kirby in the Amazing Mirror. Rated E for everyone, only for Game Boy Advance. Kirby in the Amazing Mirror was the seventh mainline Kirby game. Even at number seven, it has a lot of firsts and unique elements. It's the only installment in the series where King DDD doesn't make any appearance whatsoever. Also, it uses a Metroidvania playstyle, where the map branches out in several directions. You explore the worlds, solve puzzles, defeat enemies, collect items, and of course gain power-ups that allow you to traverse new areas of the map. Occasionally, you'll run into sub-bosses. If you swallow a sub-boss after defeating them, you'll be granted rare abilities. What was totally unique for the genre was multiplayer, where Kirby could call other players or CPU-controlled Kirbys for aid. The reception was quite positive, with Kirby and the Amazing Mirror even coming in second for both of GameSpot's Best GBA and Best Platformer awards in 2004. The Dead or Alive franchise is most known for introducing the innovative countering system known as the Triangle System to the 3D fighting genre. Just kidding, it's most known for breast physics. <laughs> Dead or Alive Ultimate was a compilation of both DOA 1 and DOA 2. It contains a high resolution edition of the Sega Saturn version of the first game and an enhanced version of the second game that included a whole new graphics engine and DOA 3 mechanics, new content, and Hitomi as a playable character. While online multiplayer is stock standard for any fighting game these days, this was among the first fighting games to offer online play, being beaten out by only Mortal Kombat Deception. Dead or Alive Ultimate released with a crystal clear blue Xbox in Japan, while the US version included two random trading cards of the characters as part of the collector's edition. I think we got the short end of the stick on this one. In 2005, Dead or Alive Ultimate was awarded Fighting Game of the Year at the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers Awards. The game was also nominated for Best Fighting Game at the GameSpot's Game of the Year Awards. Without a doubt, the biggest release this month introduced the world to the notorious Hot Coffee mod. Ooh, yeah! You drive with style, Carl Johnson. And I never mind losing to a guy who's willing to push himself right to the edge. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was the fifth main entry in the Grand Theft Auto series and the follow-up to the wildly popular Vice City. The story follows former gangster CJ, who returns home following his mother's murder and is drawn back into his former life of crime. CJ's journey takes him across the fictional U.S. state of San Andreas, which is heavily based on California and Nevada, and structured similarly to the previous two games, with third-person shooting and driving, mostly stolen vehicles, across a huge open-world environment. This entry emphasized personalization with a ton of options to customize CJ's look, which would actually change how the NPCs would react to CJ. Pretty cool. The customization wasn't just skin deep, however. You could acquire and improve skills such as driving, weapons handling, stamina, and fighting styles. Okay, so we have to talk about the Hot Coffee mod. 
In the unmodded version of the game, CJ's girlfriend will ask if he wants coffee. When he agrees, they both go inside and based on the sounds, you know what's going on. A modder from the Netherlands released the Hot Coffee mod, which allows you to go in the house to see some of the most awkward digital sex ever. Based on this, the ESRB changed the rating from mature to adults only, Not on my watch, buddy. making San Andreas the only mass-released adults-only console game in the US. Rockstar, of course, had the existing games removed from the shelves and replaced with new versions that had the scene patched out. Controversy aside, this was a wildly popular game, selling over 2 million in its first six days. And the critical reception was sky high as well, with a 95 on Metacritic and winning numerous awards and topping a ton of best of lists. Well, that's it for today. Next month, we have a hero that made glasses cool, a vampire RPG, and an MMORPG that changed the world. I'm Adam Scott, and this has been Games Grown Up. Now, if you like what you saw here, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, it's a great time to do so, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this new series. Go ahead and put those in the comments below. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.